Hey there. Did you know Baker's always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Baker's app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Baker's today. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. Welcome into another mon- Mock Draft Monday edition of the podcast. Just like last week, seven rounds, all San Francisco 49ers live mock draft from the first round all the way to the seventh round. Uh, I've done some more scouting, some more research, it'll be more in depth than it was one week ago. Hope you had a wonderful and I mean wonderful WrestleMania night one and night two weekend. Just watched Cody Rhodes finish the story again about, I don't know, 30 minutes ago. It was epic. The Rock, Undertaker, John Cena. It was awesome. And I hope we can carry over the momentum from that into this show right now. As last week as well, using Pro Football Network's Mock Draft Simulator. And without further ado... Let's dive into our NFL Mock Draft 2.0 when it comes to what the San Francisco 49ers, I think, should do, could do, and maybe even if we get lucky, will do when the NFL Draft occurs later this month. So let's dive into it. And as we jump into pick number one, Bears on the Clock, gonna be Caleb Williams. I want to talk about the idea of trading up from pick 31 up higher into the first round. Now, San Francisco, or it, you know, again, what, two, three minutes away from winning a Super Bowl. So you're right there. Your team is essentially back again for another season. You have double digit picks this year as well in the draft. There's so much, so many things you can do. You can trade up, you can trade down. Like there's so much maneuverability and freedom San Francisco has, John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan have in this draft to make big moves. Um, but it really comes down to what do you want to do in the first round? Do you value cornerback? Do you value a defensive end? Do you value a tackle? I think the consensus of Niner fans is now that you have your franchise quarterback, you have to protect him. Your left side's taken care of for we'll see how much longer in Trent Williams. But outside of Trent, while you do have some starters in place, you have the exact same starting five coming into this year that ended last season, are you comfortable walking into the year, into the future, past this year, with that same group? Uh, I think the answer is a collective no, with Trent being also a big question mark as to will he be back in two, three years' time, you have to build and look towards the future in that first round. So last week we took Jordan Morgan, tackle from Arizona in the first round, pick 31. I still like that pick. I still like Jordan Morgan. I know fans will scoff at it, but because of the uh, of the, the arm length, oh, watch out for the arm length. What should San Francisco do in the first round? Let's dive in and see how this draft falls in Maybe San Francisco's favor, or do we have to stay put at pick 31? First overall, Caleb Williams, no shock. Jaden Daniels and Drake May, three quarterbacks back-to-back. Joe Alt is not the first tackle off the board. Uh, And as of right now, things looking pretty good if you want a tackle for San Francisco. But you pause it right here. You get to pick 15 so far in this mock draft. And if you want an offensive tackle, There's players like J.C. Latham. There's players like Tyler Guyton. Kingsley Suomatea. If you want an inside guy, Christian Haynes is there. Cooper Beebe's there. Much too early for both those, by the way. But then Graham Barton's there. Jackson Power Johnson is there. Then there is the wild card, Amarius Mims. Now, in this mock draft thus far, we've seen teams like the Chargers go tackle. We've seen a team like the Titans go tackle, which I think both easily could in this mock draft. Talese Fuaga, the Cowboys traded up for him at 12. 
the Raiders took Troy Fontenot from Washington. That puts us here at 15 with the Colts, okay? If you are the you likely want to get a player like Brock Bowers. He just went right in front of you to the Saints, who I don't know why they didn't take a tackle, but I digress. Mock drafts are crazy. But you're at 15. Of Marius Mims, J.C. Latham, Tyler Guyton, Kingsley Sumatea, and Jordan Morgan. I'm comfortable taking Jordan Morgan at 31 again. That's fine. I, I am cool with that. But if you're the Niners, and you're at 15, or, 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 or you're sitting there at pick 31, 16 picks to go to get to you, and you see teams like the Seahawks, the Jaguars, the Bengals, the Steelers, the Rams, the Dolphins, the Packers, teams ahead of you, some in your own conference that want tackles, that need offensive tackles. I'm calling up the Colts. Now, moving up 16 picks is by no means an easy path to do so. I don't want Jackson Powers Johnson. I don't want Jordan Morgan at 15. I don't want a, you know, Kingsley Sumatea. I'm calling up, and I'm seeing if I can swing a trade for Marius Mims out of Georgia. Offensive tackle, currently plays right tackle in a few years, could be your left tackle once Williams retires, he's 6'7", 340 pounds, 36-inch arms. So if you were concerned of, with Jordan Morgan, 6'5", 311 pounds, with 32 and 7 8 inch arms, you're not going to have the arm length issue. This, like, Amarius Mims is a bona fide tackle. He's built like one, and he, while they don't have much tape on him, the tape that he has is darn near excellent. He's technically sound, despite not playing much. He has a great anchor. He has phenomenal hand usage in, in pass pro. Um, there are times where he will move to the outside too quick, and then he can't get back inside, but he has those long arms, right? Unlike Jordan Morgan, where if he does get beat, he's 36-inch pythons to go out there and hopefully slow down a, you know, edge rusher coming off and taking a spin move towards the inside and it's not just that he has the physical tools the body to make up for some of the deficiencies he has with playing time which he hasn't had much of again with playing time with some proper coaching I think Marius Mims could almost get rid of many of the the knocks or negatives on his game he has the building blocks of an elite pass protector in the NFL and for year one or two, if that's playing right tackle, you have two defining cornerstone tackles and Trent Williams, future Hall of Famer and Amarius Mims, 6'7", 340 pounds, stud out of Georgia, playing right tackle, who then in a couple years moves to left tackle. The building blocks are there to, I won't say not lose a step, because when you lose Trent Williams in a couple years, you're going to not be the same on the left side, that's a guarantee. But you're going to be able to take that blow and say, in three, four years' time, Mims could be the top left tackle, top tackle, top 10 tackle in football. Um, he's one of the most sound run blockers in the draft. Um, he's well-rounded with his get-off. And he has tenacity where Trent Williams, and I don't want to compare many tackles to Trent Williams. E even doing it for Mims is just... Just dumb. But when you talk about Trent Williams and his tenacity, ferocity, trying to annihilate defenders, Marius Mims has that. Marius Mims wants to, I mean, kill, murder, destroy opposing defenders. Like, this is a player Kyle Shanahan looks to. And if he's sitting there at 31, and even at picks, let's say it's, you know, 15, 16, 17, anything pre bangles at 18, I'm making a call up and saying, what do you want? How can I move up to go get a Marius Mims? I'm begging the NFL gods to allow Mims to fall into my lap. Now, his biggest knock is some nagging injuries. I will say this, he's not injury prone. But when you are 6'7", 340 pounds, you have 36-inch arms, you can move like, you know, 
We call Trent the Silverback, I mean, because he's just this imposing figure. He's just a beast, right? Mims has that kind of build. Now, Mims, I think, is taller than Trent. But when you're that big, you take an NBA player. When you're seven foot tall, you don't last very long in the NBA. You have to bulk up, right? You have to lose weight to carry yourself. For Mims, there are questions of how long can his body last playing. But... I think in the NFL, with the right diet, with the right coaching, I think he can be a star. And I'm, I'm not talking, oh, a top 20 tackle. If, if he reaches the top of his potential, we're talking top five. Number one tackle in football if he becomes that left tackle. And even if he stays a right tackle, if you can be a top right tackle in football, your value is a little less, no doubt, but you're anchoring the strong side of an offensive line that desperately needs a right tackle. I get you have cold in the kibitz, but you can slide him back inside. It improves everything. You get depth by getting a starting tackle now. And again, we like Jordan Morgan. We do. All that to say, for the people that have questions about Jordan Morgan's arm length or, or want Kingsley Silomate, who I think is better suited to be a guard in the NFL... You go get a Marius Mims. That's the guy you don't have any questions about other than can your body hold up. And in year one, that shouldn't be a problem. And let's say it is. Let's say his body needs time to hold on and catch up to the NFL level. You have Colton McKivitz there. Like you have a fallback option in case. In case um, things don't go well for him. But let's try to move up here. I hope it's successful. So we're going to try to move up to pick number 15 with the Colts. Let's try to make a trade here. Some of these trades are you know, a, a little wonky. But you're going to have to give up a ton moving up 16 picks. We want pick 15 to get ahead of Seattle and Jacksonville and the Steelers. And more importantly, the Bengals. If the Bengals can, if they see Mims at 18, they should take Mims at 18. But if we can get in front of them. Give him pick 31. Give him a second round pick next year. Give him a third round pick next year. We can get plenty of compensatory picks next free agency. We can we can afford to lose third round picks, okay? We're, we're going to give him 31, a second rounder next year, a third rounder this year, pick 94, and a third rounder next year. And we're also going to throw in pick 211 to just say, eh, why not? So we're getting rid of five picks. For one, that's how much I believe in Amarius Mims from Georgia. Let's see if they buy into this. Let's confirm. The pick has been rejected. Well, that's scary. Uh-oh. What are we going to do? Shall I, and that's the beauty of these mock drafts. You try and try and try and you fail. Let's wait one pick and see what happens. They go Quinion Mitchell. J.C. Latham, who I think is horrible... J.C. Latham, who should be a guard, the next tackle goes pick 16. Jacksonville, you, we desperately have to get ahead of the, of, of the Bengals. Pick 17. We are calling the Jacksonville Jaguars who want Brandon Ayuk. We ain't traded him. Don't get any ideas. We want pick 17. We'll give you pick 31. We'll give you a third round pick next year. We'll give you a second round pick next year. And we'll give you pick 94 in the exact same offer we offered the Colts, who went probably the best cornerback in the draft, Quignon Mitchell. Smart move for them. The Seahawks thankfully passed on Marius Mims. Let's see if the Jaguars make this trade. The trade has been accepted. The San Francisco 49ers are on the clock with the trade with the Jacksonville Jaguars. We are now going to get above Jordan Morgan, who we do like here. We are going to get the next, hopefully great, right tackle of the immediate future in left tackle once Charles Williams is gone with the San Francisco 49ers. Marius Mims, we are going to draft him, reject these trades, not trading any of these picks. We won a Marius Mims. Get out of here, Kansas City. We're going to draft the Marius Mims, leaving Tyler Guyton on the board leaving Kingsley Sumatea and Jordan Morgan. Now we're sitting here with picks 17, which is a Marius Mims, pick 63, 
picks 124, 132, 135, 176, 215, and 251. Still plenty of picks to go around. Just don't have that third round pick this year. We are going forward and making sure we get the guy to replace Trent eventually. This is it. This is, we are going full blow. We're not going for a quarterback or receiver. We're just going forward all. Get our right tackle now. In a few years' time, once Trent is gone, you just move Mims over. And again, you have a 6'7 beast. That's 340 pounds that can move like the best of them. Like, this is a star. I want to give Raphael 562 Niners. He says, what's up? What's going on, Raphael? Hope you're having a great day. Great Raw After Mania day, if you're a big wrestling fan. And like he says, like, share, and subscribe. Do it now. It's free. It's easy. It's cheap. And I want to remind you guys, you can follow us on social media at 49ers.access is the Instagram. 49ers underscore access is the Twitter or X. You can also use our promo code 49ers access. 49 ers -E -S -S, um, at SeatGeek.com and save yourself $20 off your first purchase. We are on the clock now at pick 63. We're not trading any more picks. That was the big swing we're going for here. Now what do we do? You've gotten your right tackle. You're sitting there. You're like, oh, do you want to go receiver here? If you are the Niners, do you want to go tight end? A lot of people like Ben Sinat from Kansas State. I myself like Ben Sinat from Kansas State. Malachi Corley's there. Do you want to fortify the trenches even further going defensive tackle? Braden Fisk, who we took in the second round, the exact same pick last draft. Do you want to go him again? Braylon Trice, Marshawn Nealon, who San Francisco has a top 30 visit lined up with, is still on the board. Reminder, you don't have a third round pick. You just don't. Do you want to go cornerback here and make sure you get your guy? Do you want to overdraft uh, Andrew Phillips? you want to overdraft a uh, Mike Sane who's still from Michigan? Do you want to get kind of crazy with it and draft Kalen Carson from Wake Forest? Let's talk cornerbacks for a second because in the last draft, we dove into... Excuse me. We dove into uh, Andrew Phillips, who I like Andrew Phillips a lot. I, I think he is the best nickelback in this draft i think he's the best one by far um or at least of the second and third round quarterback or uh, cornerback excuse me right so let's look at kalen carson for a second out of wake forest i like kalen a lot i think he's being wildly overlooked he's six foot 198 he had a leg injury during the scouting process which hurt his his stock um, it kind of leaves him as kind of the, one of the bigger unknowns of, if this guy's healthy, he can play. Is he going to be healthy? But if he is healthy, he's got good size. He can play outside. He plays fast. He accelerates extremely well. He's a good transitioner from going back and forth, you know, on the back pedal, coming in, uh, cutting in and out of his routes with the receiver. He's a good tackler, a good run defender. He's physical. He likes to mosh and mash at the line of scrimmage. And he's someone who I think San Francisco would like because they're simply just, or he is simply just unafraid to get physical. Now, he might get flagged, but San Francisco likes a player like that in Mooney Ward, who is not afraid to 7, 10 yards downfield. Like, how many times this year did Mooney Ward get flagged for illegal contact or holding downfield? A lot. But I guarantee you, in big games, most games, right? They're not going to call a lot of the, you know, a lot of the touching that he does. If you can get two guys like that, that can just jam receivers at the line of scrimmage, can play man, can play zone, can just be too physically, I don't want to say imposing, but too physically domineering, dominating cornerbacks that are unafraid to take a step towards DK Metcalf and say, look, you're bigger than me. You're stronger than me. It doesn't matter. That's someone like Kalen Carson. Uh, Want to give Siren a hello in the chat. What's going on, Siren? Hope you're having a great day. Um, 
And there's Chris Abrams Drain from Missouri. Let's see what I have on him. He's a smaller cornerback. He's 5'11, 173 pounds. Um, has really good lateral agility, great closing speed. The issue is, unlike Caitlin Carson, he will be out physical. And when you have a division that has Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua and DK Metcalf and Lockett and JSN, and even if, let's say, the Cardinals get, whether it's Malik Neighbors or Marvin Harrison Jr., uh, you don't want Chris Abrams' drain going up against either one of those guys. So I would stay away from a smaller cornerback, 5'11", but a smaller kind of doesn't use his body very well uh, in Chris Abrams' drain. And there's a player like DJ Jones, or James, excuse me, who's undersized from Auburn, 5'11", 170 pounds, super quick, as you should be at that size. Really sticky in coverage, but you can be sticky. The issue is, he ain't just sticky, he's grabby. You're going to get holding calls, defensive PIs downfield, and you're like, you're costing us big games, buddy. I would stick away from DJ James. Then you get into, do you want an outside cornerback, or do you want an inside cornerback? If you want an outside guy, Kalen Carson might be your guy. But if you want an inside guy, are you willing to, because he traded up for Mims, are you willing to overdraft and get a nickelback in the second round? I think it might be too rich, but since we're here, and we might not get a chance to discuss them later, what about Mike St. Rastille from Michigan? Now he's 5'9", 182 pounds. He's a tiny guy. But if he's playing nickel, that isn't an issue. He's frisky. He's explosive. He can be a day one starter, at least I believe so. Um, in short yardage, comebackers, um, drag routes, he is explosive in short yardage. I'm talking a 1-5-4, 10-yard split, a 40-inch vertical, a 4.01 shuttle time. He's extinctive. He loves to blow up receivers and running backs at the line of scrimmage. He likes to lay some wood, as they say in the NFL. His ball skills are there. Um, he is someone that will get the ITs. He will get the picks. He'll get the PBUs. He'll get you off the field, which you want that. So you, like, what I'm saying is you get a tackling, all the smaller guy, a tackling nickelback that likes to get interceptions, likes to get PBUs, um, and, and despite his 5'9 stature and build, 182 pounds, he'll take on tight ends. He doesn't care. Like, he's unafraid to use his small frame, and he'll go take on bigger guys. Like, he, he's a fearless nickelback you can put in this defense, and I go, yeah, he fits what San Francisco likes to do. Um, he's someone that you don't really want shadowing a receiver, which... Play him at nickel and say you're, you're just going to cover that position the entire game. Like, you're not going to have him follow Cooper Cup around. He's just not that guy. He's not going to follow your, your Puka Nakua's. Um, he doesn't have the ability to mirror great receiver routes. He just isn't that guy. But if you want a nickel back, I, I think he's certainly up there as, as, as a day one starter um, in this draft class. Uh, then you get to the guy we drafted last time. Right, which is Andrew Phillips. He's 5'10", 191 pounds, bigger size, bigger body than Mike Sanger still from Michigan. Um, he's physical, sometimes a little too grabby, but he's hard to beat vertically. He can mirror routes really well, unlike Sanger still. You wouldn't mind him following a, a Cooper Cup or, or an opposing team's slot receiver. Again, he can play slot. If he has to play outside, I wouldn't do that, but he, he could on a whim. Um, you talk about, of the guys you talked about so far, Sane Rastil, um, DJ James, Chris Abrams, Drain, um, and Kalen Carson. Carson, I think, has the highest upside, but of the nickelbacks, Sane Rastil, Phillips, and others in this draft, uh, his highest potential limit is shut down cornerback. A guy that can take away and opposing players slot receiver. You know, go, oh my God. Like, like you, you say it's like Mooney Ward against DK Metcalf on Thanksgiving night. Shut him down. Erased him from the game plan. Took him away from Geno Smith. Andrew Phillips has that potential 
from the slot. Um, I would love to see him across from Cooper Cup and, and, and Smith and Jigba from Seattle. Um, the only issue with him, great in coverage. Not the best run defender. Not someone you look at and say, you aren't a great tackler. You'll get beat. You're lighter on your feet. You don't, you, you actually play lighter than your weight size might be, which again is 5'10", 191. Um, I can see San Francisco falling in love with his coverage skills, but then watching him on, on run defense and say, yikes. Um, which is kind of the opposite of San Rastil, which he's a much better run defender much better tackler. But this comes down to preference. I think San Francisco wants and would prefer, like, if you can stop a team from catching the football, you don't have to tackle. All that to say, you want a player that once you do, which in this NFL, you will have to tackle. When if someone is open field, lined up across from you, can you bring them down? That's not Andrew Phillips. That is Mike Sainrasil from Michigan. Um, or you can go on the defensive line, right? Do you want to go an edge? Do you want to go Austin Booker, Marshawn Neeland? If I'm the Niners, I have gone tackle. I have my my Debo, my Uke, my Jawan Jennings all back. My three receivers are not going there. Do you want to go tight end? I think if you take a second round tight end, it's way too rich when you have George Kittle on that field. Um, I get it. I am someone who really likes Ben Sinat from Kansas State. If somehow he falls, and I mean if he falls to round three and they don't trade up for a tackle and Ben Sinat's there, uh, take him. Take him. Um, let's talk about him for a second, though, because we aren't going to draft him, but I do want you to know who he is. Um Ben Sinat from Kansas State, in my opinion, he's not Brock Bowers, but he is tight end 2-3 in this draft, in my opinion. Um, he's someone I look at and I say, man, like, you plug him into this system, he's 6'3", 245 pounds, which is average size for a tight end, but he plays big. Um, good route runner. He's got some wiggle to him left and right. Um... He's a good receiver, 48 catches on 73 targets, firm hands in a good way, a guy you just trust to make the catch, you know, 90% of the time. Um, good run blocker, 76.1 uh, run blocking grade this past year. He can play at the line of scrimmage, can play inside, outside, in the backfield. He can do it all. Like, Ben Sinat is really good from Kansas State. Uh, and if he's there in the third round or they want to make a move up in the second round, and they want to get a tight end. I think round two is too rich for tight end, but I can see Kyle Shanahan falling in love with Ben Sinat from Kansas State. Uh, we aren't going to do that, but I just want to give my opinion on him because he, it, if he does come to San Francisco, and this team can run you know, 12 personnel, uh, 21 personnel, like, oh my goodness. Like, oh my goodness. Like, you have yourself two really really good tight ends that can do it all, really. Um, let's talk receivers for a second because this receiver class is stacked and you're at pick 63. You don't get to pick until pick 124 because of that trade-up. You have to be really conscious of what's going to be on the board still. Malachi Corley's still there. Medivo Samuel of this draft. Uh, Roman Wilson is there from Michigan. Um, he's a speedster. He's... He, he just, Roman Wilson to me is so just kind of invisible in regards to everyone else in this draft because right behind him on their draft board on the PFN uh, mock draft database is Ricky Pearsall, who I think will go before pick 63. He's incredible. Good route runner, good receiver, great speed, some of the best hands, if not the best hands in this class. He's a hand catcher. He's someone who is San Francisco by any chance is saying, okay, let's trade Brandon Ayuk. Go get me Ricky Pearsall. Um, there's going to be an effort by Niner fans, people who are saying, hey, uh, Debo Samuel in one year's time might be gone. That's a conversation you can certainly have. Why not take Corley? 
I could argue Pearsall is much more like Ayuk. I'm not saying he is Ayuk by any means, but he's much more like Ayuk than Adebo. Like the Debo archetype, while fans want it again, if Debo is indeed gone in one year's time, I don't think San Francisco's offense needs it to succeed. Um, and I do think that, again, by any chance you want to strengthen your receiver room, Ricky Pearsall is great. Um, I haven't heard they've had contact with him, whether it's a pro day or a, a top 30 visit lined up. And there's players down the board of Jermaine Burden, who has character issues, but is really good. Johnny Wilson is massive. What is he? He's 6'6", 237. Uh, Jamari Thrash, Brendan Rice. Like, receiver, I think, is really deep where you can find a guy at 124. Which is why, in my mind, I'm sitting here and I go, okay, you fortified the trenches on the offense. Do you want to do it again on defense? I think it makes a lot of sense. Chris Jenkins is already gone. He went to Philadelphia. Brandon Dorless has already gone. I know it says Edge. He can play both. Um, he's someone that you kind of view him as a tweener. Michael Hall Jr. is gone. Like, Ruka Roro is gone. He he went to the Browns. Like, you are losing multiple chances on getting that defensive tackle you want next to Hargrave. And I think I'm going to do the exact same pick we did last time with Braden Fisk. Braden Fisk is just the Chris Kosarek, like, give me that guy. I want to coach that guy. You let me coach that guy, I'll make sure that you're happy we got that guy. Like, that is Braden Fisk in a nutshell. He's just awesome. Like, he is the epitome of a wrecking ball, bowling ball style of defensive tackle. He's nasty. He's dirty. Like, he's a guy who you just say, oh my goodness, Get him next to Bosa and Floyd and Hargrave. Braden Fisk, you have your right tackle. You have your defensive tackle. And now we kind of sit back and wait and go, okay, we're at pick 124. We have the remaining picks available. We have 124, 132, 135. Do you sit back? Because you're not getting inside of the top 200 by trading those three picks. You're going to have to wait. Do you make another trade if you are the Niners? Or do you just sit back and go, look, we have like three picks back to back. We can find somebody else. Um, but you're waiting from essentially round two to round four. Going to be a ton of guys that maybe you want that come off that board. That's the price you pay. But I will say this. As we await pick 124, that's why you're okay getting a Marius Mims. Like, if I'm the Niners and they make this trade, I am perfectly fine with, especially if it's a Marius Mims, going, okay, like, it doesn't matter what it took to get the guy, we got him. We got our star right tackle now and our future star left tackle. Like, we got the guy that can carry us into the future, block Brock Purdy's backside. And I think we all sit there, and I think Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch would go, okay, like, we are set. Like, we made the right move at the right time. Now we're back on the clock. We've gone right tackle. We've gone defensive tackle. What's out there for us? Now, I know we're in round four. There is a report that was tweeted out, then deleted, by Tony Pauline, who I would not put too much credibility towards his name. Uh... All due respect, it's not meant to be a knock on him. It's just, he's the same guy that said, the Jets have a godfather offer on the table for Debo Samuel. And that turned out to be a fourth round pick and like some more stuff. That's not a godfather offer. But he tweeted out that the Niners have a third round grade, a day two grade on running back out of Louisville, Isaac Garendo. Now, I know what you're thinking. Third round running back, Kyle never learns. I would agree. I wouldn't do that. All that to say, I do like myself some Isaac Garendo. I think Isaac Garendo is probably the best. He's, he's my number one outside zone runner in this draft. He fights through contact. He lowers his pads. Excellent vision. Solid pass catcher. He's a capable pass blocker. He has 4-3 speed. He's six foot, 221 pounds. He had 22 explosive runs this past year. 
on only 132 carries, 6% of his runs were explosive runs. Now, there are some concerns, right? Takes a while to get going. He doesn't have this explosive, you know, shot out of a cannon speed, despite running a 4-3. Um, there is injury history. He's been hurt a lot in his career. Now, there are two sides to injuries. You're hurt. You don't play a lot. That's a scary thing. The other side of that is you haven't played a lot because you've been hurt. You have less tread on your tires. And I like Isaac Rendo a lot. All that to say, fourth round, pick 124 in this mock draft, which I, you know, again, their mock drafts, things can go haywire really quick. Uh, I think if you're at pick 124, there's no way that Isaac Grendo goes in eight picks and you can't get him later in the fourth round or early fifth round. I think you have to go edge rusher here. There's Javon Solomon right there. There's Mo Kamara at pick 187 or on their on on their draft board, he's 187. I love me some Javon Solomon. You can go cornerback. This is where it gets tricky. On the board right now, if you can see on YouTube or, or Facebook or Twitter, um, there's a player named Kyrie Jackson out of Oregon. And when I tell you that I love a player, I don't say it very often, but I love Kyrie Jackson. I love the Marius Mims. There's a handful of guys I just fall in love with in this draft. And there's others too, but Kyrie Jackson, he's six foot three inches, 200 pounds, almost 33 inch arms. And he knows how to use his body when defending a receiver. He has four five speed. He has makeup speed. If he gets beat, he can catch up to the ball, to the receiver. He's physical at the line. Um, he's a good tackler against the run. He loves to tackle. Like, there are players that like to tackle that they're willing to tackle. No, 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 no. Kyrie Jackson from Oregon loves to tackle. I think of this draft, he's top five at the catch point. He likes to get picks, knows how to invade space. He can be a press corner. Um, I said it last week. Of the cornerbacks in this draft, of players that have an archetype or players that you point to and say, wow, like they... Their pro-style comp is just so obvious. Is it unfair? Yes. I hate doing that because you're putting expectations on a player that says, hey, like like Isaac Grendo, everyone's saying, he's Raheem Mostert 2.0, which we all love Raheem in San Francisco. Uh, he's a great player for the Dolphins now. Just got paid again. That's great. I don't want to call Isaac Grendo Raheem Mostert. It puts expectations that, hey, you're going to be a top 10 running back with blazing speed that can just blow up a play anytime. And while some of those things are true, you're telling opposing teams, you're telling yourself, if he's not Raheem Mostert, he stinks. He's a bust. Kyrie Jackson has the build, the archetype, and in the right system, a Seattle-style defensive system, like what San Francisco is going back to, where... He does have a little bit of Richard Sherman to him. Now, I'm not saying he's Sherman. That's nuts to say. I'm just saying there's a little bit of Sherman in there in the way he plays, the way he's built. Um, hence why, I think, if you are the Niners at pick 124, he's mocked at pick 125. I think it would be foolish. You already missed out on Andrew Phillips and Mike Sainer steal. Go get you an outside corner. Keep Lenore on the inside. You protect yourself. You can pay Lenore a little less money playing nickel. If Mooney Ward, who's a free agent after this year, wants to leave, you at least have yourself an ex-press cover corner in your defense. I think you have to go Kyrie Jackson from Oregon at pick 124. You have your right tackle. You have your defensive tackle. And you have your cornerback. And as I speak, Isaac Grendo goes to the Packers. So what do I know? <laughs> And Brendan Rice goes to the Chiefs. Okay, this is perfect timing for Brendan Rice to go. Perfect timing, okay? You have your cornerback, you have your defense tackle, and you have your right tackle. What do you do? Do you want to go receiver? You want to go running back? You want to go tight end? I think of the players on the board offensively, like you can go to guard. If you really want to just double up, 
triple up on your offensive line, that's fine. You do pick in four, three picks, 135, end of the fourth round. I think it would be extremely smart here if you're the Niners to get you either a receiver or an edge rusher. Um, let's talk about Javon Solomon. Um, let's see. We took him in the last draft that we did last Monday. And Javon Solomon, every year, there has to be at least two Javons on this team. Kinlaw, Hargrave, they have to be there. This year, it can be Hargrave, it why not Solomon. All that to say that Javon Solomon, to me, despite being six foot 246, wildly undersized, he's a converted off-ball linebacker. What I'm telling you, that this man has the craziest build I've, I've ever seen. He's not super tall. He's not this massive person. When you talk about a six foot, 246 pound man, I'm 6'2", 220, 215. I'm a larger man, okay? He's six foot, 246, like almost pure muscle, with 34 inch arms. This man has longer arms than Kyrie Jackson, who we just talked about. He has longer arms than offensive tackles like Jordan Morgan. Like, what? Like, this man has two inches less on his arms than Amarius Mims, who he traded up for in this mock draft. <laughs> he has extreme bend. He's an explosive player. I do think he fits a role player, uh, kind of a key or part of a defense. Think Josh Uche, uh, Achenna, uh Ochenna Nwosu from Seattle. Um, like, he just feels like you are a pass rusher. That's like, just go get the quarterback. Don't run defend. Just get the quarterback. He's a good first step. He's a pure pass rusher. 19% pass rush win rate last season. 16 sacks in 14 games. That's how good Javon Solomon was last year for Troy. Just excellent, excellent edge rusher. Um, there really isn't anybody else now that you'd want. If you want to go Solomon, it makes sense. I like that pick. We made it last time. I am leaning towards doing it again. Um, let's talk about Xavier Thomas, though, because he's on the board here. They have him at pick 176 on their kind of big board. He's probably not going to be there. We have pick 135, but then we don't pick until what? Uh, we don't pick until 176. He could be gone by that time. I think he will be. So let's talk about Xavier Thomas. He's 6'2", 244 pounds out of Clemson. Um, the reason why no one's talking about him is because he had a lower leg injury, which he hasn't done much. It's like, okay, like, how serious is that leg injury? Is it going to hinder you? Or are you going to be fine coming into the NFL? He went back to school, I believe. He's 25 years old. So he's an older prospect than most. But he's super explosive. Has really good burst. He's relentless. Like Leonard Floyd, a lot of his sacks are effort sacks. Relentless level of efforts sacks. Xavier Thomas has relentless effort like Leonard Floyd. He has quick feet, good hands. Um, he's a player that can really give offensive tackle fits. Uh, when being on them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, his size is kind of questionable. Again, he's 6'2", 244. Um, you wish he was around 6'3", 6'4". Um, but the shorter you are, like Javon Solomon on the edge, the more leverage you naturally have against the tackle. Um, I think he's someone that can play standing up with his hands in the dirt. Um, he, like Honestly, ceiling is super high. The floor is really low. Like, we're talking bottom floor, basement, why'd you pick him? All the way to where do they find this next gem in the middle rounds? Um, again, he's older, but I do think he can be plugged in and be an instant rotational piece of uh, this defense. That's kind of the two guys you like. Um, Cedric Johnson's also there from Ole Miss. He's 6'3", 260 pounds. He's good build. Like, if Xavier Thomas was 6'3 instead of 6'2, 260 instead of 244, he's got the body you want. 
That is the archetype you want for an edge rusher. Um, he's someone that he knows how to use his hands. He's someone that, again, the build is there, but he's not bendy. Like, he's the opposite of what Drake Jackson was supposed to be. Like, he's straight line, set the edge, quick first step, but he doesn't have much wiggle to him. It's like, okay, like, I don't want to say he's stiff, but there, there's just not much more else than, this is who I am. I, I'm, I'm 6'3", 260. I'm here. It's like, that's not going to do it in the NFL. Um, really bad against the run. 59.3 run grade, but 70.7 grade against the pass. Uh, against the pass, excuse me. Um, and in a 10.8% pass rush win rate. Um, I just think, like, if you're going to go edge rusher, it has to be a smaller guy in Solomon. Although, again, really small. Or I think you wait for a player, maybe like Mo Kamara, who is 6'1", and you can get the extra inch uh, off of the edge for you. But let's look at receivers for a second, though, because a lot of people are like, why do you take a receiver? You traded out of the third round and you got a tackle. Now you're not going to get a receiver. Okay, let's talk receivers. Um, and again, we pick in three picks. Pick 132 and 135. There's plenty of room and time for receivers. But let's talk about Jacob Cohen from Arizona. He's 5'10", 175 pounds. Doesn't have size. Doesn't have physicality. He's someone that could get bumped off the line extremely quickly. Um... He's like, Jacob Cowing is someone that, thankfully in Shanahan's offense, a ton of motion, right? He's someone that could flourish in an offense that uses a ton of motion. He makes a lot of sense there. Um, really good in short releases uh, and, and, and against press coverage. Um, he has the straight line speed to stretch the football field. Um, and for as small as he is, he's really hard to tackle. Um, all of that to say... I don't think San Francisco wants a player that needs motion to get open. That's really concerning for me. So I would say no Jacob Cohen or Cowing from Arizona. Uh, that brings us to our last pick of the last draft of Javon Baker. Uh, San Francisco likes him. They I think they have a top 30 visit lined up for him. He's 6'1", 208 pounds. Uh, I think he is top three deep ball catcher in this draft he's super athletic um he makes a defensive backs job really hard when it comes to containing him it's like we can't stop the guy he's just everywhere right good in his routes out of his routes in his cuts out of his cuts um i think he's someone that you can trust just throw it up go up and get it he doesn't again he's not six three he's not he's not dk metcalf body He's 6'1", 208, but surprisingly, he's one of the best go-up-and-get-it receivers in this draft, along with Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison Jr. Now, he ain't those guys, but he's in that conversation to me. Um, he tracks the ball really well. He likes to make contested catches. Um, and I do think for Javon Baker, the best thing working for him with Brock Purdy now is the fact that Javon Baker, when the play breaks down, he knows how to work himself back to the quarterback and be like a Debo and Ayuk. If you want to go crazy with it, this is not to say he's this player, but a Tyreek Hill. Not the same player, but a player that knows how to come back to the ball. And when the play breaks down, there he is, open for five yards, first down, boom. Like, And you have a quarterback now that can do those kind of things. I think Javon Baker makes... You'd be a phenomenal pick here at pick 135. I don't think he falls this far, but it's a deep receiver class. So let's take him now before you miss out on him again. So Javon Baker's the pick. Uh, Cedric Johnson goes. Jacob Cowling just went. Now we're at pick 135. Okay. We got lucky. We got lucky and our boy Javon Solomon didn't go. We got real lucky. Okay. He's on the board still. Uh, let's talk tight ends for a second, though, because we don't pick until 176. There are some tight ends on the board. I can see some of you fuming, saying, forget the receivers. We have already three of those guys. We have Ronnie Bell. Forget the defensive line and forget the offensive line. We need tight ends. We can't have Kittle 
at the line of scrimmage as a blocker again in the Super Bowl. Okay, Ben Sinat's not there. What do you do? Do you want Theo Johnson? Eh, I don't know. Like Theo Johnson doesn't feel like the kind of tight end you want in San Francisco. He's 6'6", 259 pounds. Freak athlete. Freak athlete. He's someone that just isn't a receiver. He has 34 catches, 7 touchdowns. Could he be a slot tight end? Sure. Could he be a slot receiver? Sure. He's an inconsistent route runner. He doesn't play fast. He has build-up speed. He doesn't have, you know, explosive speed. It takes him a while to get going. And once he does, he's fine. He doesn't have the speed you want when it comes to... When you're 6'6", 259, like... Theo Johnson finished in like the 90th percentile in almost every single testing category and somehow he's underwhelming on film. That really sucks to hear because if he was the exact same player he was in testing as he was on film, third round pick, easily, easily third round pick. He's an average blocker. He's gotten better at run blocking over years, which is good. The things you want to see. But does... Just because you test well doesn't mean your tape screams gotta have you, right? Um, Jaheim Bell from Florida State, 6'2", 240 pounds, extremely small for a tight end. Um, An average blocker, he cannot be the inline tight end, he just can't do it. Um, Not the receiver he's made out to be. Too small to beat the line of scrimmage, like I already said. He's a good athlete, um, but he's more of a special teams guy. Like they have him on PFN at you know 139 on their big draft board. Ain't no way I think he's inside the fourth round. No way. I think he's a mid-fifth round pick. He just, like, what can Jaheim Bell do outside of play special teams? He's not a good receiver. He's an okay blocker. He lacks the build. So who else do you want to draft? Like, if I'm the Niners and I'm sitting here I go, there's Theo Johnson. Okay, like, I'm not against it. I'd rather wait. You already drafted Cam Latu. He's already on the outs. You have him, Braden Willis. You signed Eric Saubert today from the Texans. There really isn't much. There is Dallin Holker, though, from Cor- from Colorado State. All the way down at pick 196. He's 6'5". He has the build you want. 235 pounds. Solid receiver. He's someone that, he isn't the best blocker, but he's willing to be a blocker. Um, He's a good mover. I think Dallin Holker makes sense for the Niners in the fifth round, sixth round. Um, I think he, well, isn't the archetype that Shanahan likes at tight end. Um, I think if Holker put on weight and became more dense, just heavier, um, not, you know, this muscle-bound freak, but just was 250 at at 6'5". That is a much better playing weight in the NFL than 235. Um, Some have him at 241. I think he's around 240. Um, Even then, put on 10 more pounds. Give me some muscle. Give me some oomph to how you play. Holker makes sense later, though. Um, I could not sell myself on going Theo Johnson here. I just couldn't do it. I think you have to go defense. You've got your receiver. I do not want to miss out on Javon Solomon. He's my guy. So we'll go ahead and pick 135. And I think you set yourself up pretty good here if you are San Francisco. You've gotten your right tackle, Amarius Mims. You've gotten your defensive tackle, Braden Fisk. You've gotten your likely outside starting cornerback to give you some competition in that room at Kyrie Jackson. You've gotten your your speedster, your, your offensive changing speed in Javon Baker, who they like a lot. And you have an edge rusher in Javon Solomon now that you can plug in and say, okay, go beat out Drake Jackson. Go beat out Robert Beal Jr. And those guys have better builds than Solomon, but Solomon has what they don't. Natural leverage he's six foot that may scare some people off i get that i totally get it i just think 
with as many picks as San Francisco has, and with the trade that we made, we lost picks next year and one later this year. Like, you have the luxury, the ability, to take a chance on a six-foot edge rusher. And if you don't like him, make him an off-ball linebacker. Convert him back to what he used to be, right? That, that may take a year or so, that's fine. But I think what Solomon has is enough to make Shanahan and Kosarek say, we cannot skip out on this guy. Um, again, no cornerbacks I love. Can't go cornerback. I think San Francisco is going to sign a safety still. I know they've missed out on Julian Blackman. I just think that Justin Simmons is still out there. We talked about Ashton Davis for a long time. I don't want to go with safety in the draft. I, I don't think it's smart. Like, if you took a safety in this draft, what is their value? What do they do? They're going to start opposite Jair Brown year one? No. Like, there are much bigger positional needs in the first three, four rounds than safety. And if you pick one, that's fine. I just don't think you can expect impact in year one, hence why you sign a player like Ashton Davis, one year stop cap in case, in case Hufunga isn't healthy, right? Um, I think, again, you either go edge rusher in regards to... Um, let's see if we can get this going here again. Um, you go edge rusher, and you go get your Mo Kamara. You go get your... your again, who we picked last time. You can get your Mo Kamaras if they're there on the board. Which he is at pick 187. Uh, he'll probably be gone the next time you pick at 215. Or, if he's there, I don't think he is, which he's not, which stinks. But, you could go nuts. And I'm talking you can go freaking nuts if you want to. And you could go tackle again. Now, I know that sounds crazy. Just hear me out for one second. Let's not go crazy. I know you already took a Marius Mims. But Christian Jones from Texas is right there. Now, I don't think Christian Jones lasts until pick 176 in the fifth round. I don't think that's the case, so stick with me here. But let's say you miss out on a Marius Mims. Let's say Jordan Morgan's gone. Let's say San Francisco doesn't like the guys that we think they should like in this draft. And they value a day two pick for a tackle. I don't want to go a mock draft without mentioning Christian Jones from Texas. I think he'll be a second round pick. Okay. Day two pick, second, third round pick. Um, he has good technique, has a good anchor. He has good hand placement and a, again, a, a good technique. Um, he does need to work on inside counters, which is what happens with most short arm tackles. But I do think if they can get him in the building, behind a Trent Williams, a Colton McKivitz, if they can't find their tackle in that first round, I think they can tweak his technique to not be as susceptible towards inside counters. Like, his flaws are very minor. And I think he could be kind of a high floor, low ceiling kind of guy. Now, that may be Colton McKivitz for you, which is okay. But I think as a day two value pick... Christian Jones from Texas, you know, dun, 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 like the, the draft chime comes up and we're like, who the heck? Like, I don't want you to be like, I didn't know who that guy was. Christian Jones is a you know, high floor, low ceiling kind of guy that just gets it done at tackle. Um, now, I don't think they should do that. <laughs> if you get a Marius Mims, you're not going tackle twice. That would be foolish. Um, you don't have a chance now to get a Bo Limmer to strengthen uh, your interior of your offensive line, unfortunately. There just really isn't much there that you want to say, yep, I want that, right? Um, Dominic Puny is gone from Kansas, who I also like a lot, um, and, and Zach Zinter from uh, Michigan's also gone. So a lot of the guys I would point to and say, that pick that guy, pick this guy, those guys are gone to draft. Um, all that to say, I think when you get into this realm, fifth round, pick 176. I think you find yourself in the running back category of a feasible area to strengthen your running back room. I know they just signed a guy, but 
special teams players are not special. <laughs> I mean, usually they're not special. Um, I want to get into uh, Dejon Edwards for a hot second from Georgia. We drafted him last time. He's five foot ten, two hundred and seven pounds, just a workhorse. Um, average five point four yards a carry at Georgia this past or the last two seasons at Georgia. Uh, twenty touchdowns and just two fumbles. Um, great vision. Um, rather impatient sometimes, uh, but a quick accelerator. Just an all around. I think he'll get overlooked for you know the like the running back room isn't the class isn't that great this year but i do think it's slightly underrated where people are kind of writing them off and if you're in the fifth round sixth round and you can get yourself a, a dejon edwards from georgia like you have yourself i think someone that could be your your rb2 rb3 um in a handful of years um austin jones who may be maybe be like a you know last pick of the draft kind of player from USC, uh, they have him and they're hosting him Wednesday at their local pro day. He's 5'9", 211, has good vision, um, plays bigger than his 5'9 size would say. Fine enough receiver, um, really good straight line speed, speed 4'5", five speed, 4'40 time. Um, rather impatient though, getting or running through his blocks uh, and waiting for those to open up. Um, not a great pass blocker, but I do think he's someone that if Kyle Shanahan said, go left, he would go left. Go right, he would go right. Do this, do that. He'd be like, yes, sir. And I think Kyle's like, wait a minute, like, I can have that kind of control with a running back? Um, he doesn't get off the plan very much. And again, they're hosting him on Wednesday, so why wouldn't he be brought up in a conversation? Um, I want to see if Jalen Berger is still here from Michigan State. Um, I don't see him, which stinks, because I like myself some Jalen Berger. He isn't here, but I'll dive into him, since I already said his name. Uh, Jalen Berger from Michigan State, he's 6'1", 215 pounds, 4'5", 8", 40 times, so round of 4'6". Um, very patient runner. He likes to let lanes develop for him. He's not going to be, you know overzealous and jump into a hole and say oh crap now i'm covered you know now i'm gonna get tackled um pretty good receiver out of the backfield has soft hands good screen game kind of guy um doesn't have breakaway speed again a 4.5840 40 time not great um but he's someone that i would call a trudger someone that you just say you know two three yards two three yards two three yards first down two three yards two three yards two three yards first down um I think for a team that desperately, in my opinion, needs a power back, I think he makes a lot of sense uh, for the team. All that to say, I don't think you can go running back at pick 176. That'd be foolish. Um, the receivers here, you already got your one guy. I think you walk in the next year with Debo, Ayuk, Jennings, Ronnie Bell, Chris Conley, Javon Baker, Danny Gray... Um, and insert other guys that you picked up along the way. Um, that wasn't supposed to rhyme, but it did. Um, I think you like your room is kind of done. Like the idea that San Francisco needs to go a receiver is just incorrect. They don't need to at all. Like receiver isn't why they lost <laughs> the Super Bowl. The reason they lost was they stopped running the football. Kansas City played well, and the offensive line struggled. We've already fixed the offensive line. Like, we already have. Um, now, I would like to add an interior guy. I just don't think there is anyone that stands out to say, yep, need him. Um, let's see what is on the board for linebacker, though. I don't think... Yeah, no one no one truly stands out at this point. I do like Easton Gibbs from Wyoming. I think he can be kind of a shocker of, like, who is this guy? Um... So this is the case. I'm going to get greedy. And I'm going to double up on an edge rusher. Do we go Xavier Thomas from Clemson? Do we go Mo Kamara? My borderline favorite player in the entire draft on defense? Do I get selfish? <laughs> Pick the guy who I doubt San Francisco would actually take? 
He's 6'1", 248, doesn't have great length or size, but he has power. He's explosive off the ball, relentless, like 45 tackle for losses, three and a half sacks and five forced fumbles in a couple years, five years at Colorado. Like when you average nine tackle for losses, and, and what is that, four or five, uh, six sacks, I can't do math, six sacks and one forced fumble a year, I mean, my goodness. But I do think San Francisco gets a little crazy. I think they're going to go Xavier Thomas. I, re- I really do. He has the build they like. They can take a chance on him. We'll go Xavier Thomas. I will not take Mo Kamara. I hate myself for it. We'll see where he goes. I think you get Xavier Thomas in the building with Kosarek. Get him healthy. I think Xavier Thomas could play day one as a, as, as a rotational piece. As Mo Kamara goes to the Jets. Of all the teams that go to, it's the Jets. <laughs> um... We don't pick until uh, now 2.15. We have two picks left, I believe. I think it's 2.15 and 2.51. Okay, two picks left. I think we've aced, you know, four out of the six picks, five out of the six picks so far. Um, Again, I, I would have liked to go on the interior of the offensive line. There just wasn't a player that stood out that you say, yep, I need that guy. We got Bo Limmer. From Arkansas in the last mock draft, I would love it if he was there. They like him in San Francisco. Um, I, I I hope he would be there. Um, all that to say, I don't think he would be there this late in the draft. I think he'd be in you know, that third, fourth round pick range, fifth round pick range. But again, we traded up for Marius Mims. That's the price you have to pay. Do you want to get 10, 11 picks and just stack your roster? Or do you want to... Um, get that one blue chipper that you likely aren't in a place to get at pick 31. I value a blue chip prospect knowing that if you can get the guy to play right tackle this year, then play left tackle in a handful of years, um, you've won. Like You really have won the draft. Like you've gotten a guy where the NFL says, man, I wish we got that person. Uh, that, to me, is a Mary Smims. Um, let's sit back for a second. Let's go back to running backs. Because Dejon Edwards is still there. Do you want to double up and go running back, running back? I wouldn't do so. But um, I know last time we talked, let's see if I can find him on here. I think he may have already gone. Um, no, we drafted McCallan Castles from Tennessee. Um, many fans didn't like that. Not really sure why. I think he's fine. You're in the sixth, seventh round. What do you expect to draft, right? Um, I think this is the time. Same as last week, you go running back. I think you can talk yourself into Dejon Edwards from Georgia. Don't let him slip this far. If you like him, take him. We will go Dejon Edwards from Georgia. Um, just a just a workhorse kind of guy. Where if <clears throat> excuse me, this is where things get tricky. Like McCaffrey, been very healthy the past few years, thankfully. Um, if you lose him, do you trust? Elijah Mitchell, like take uh, JD in the chat. Um, I want to say plan a trade of Mitchell or Mason. Okay, JD, like that makes some sense. The issue is, is that if McCaffrey isn't healthy, let's say for whatever reason, hope he is, fingers crossed, who do you trust? Do you trust Mitchell for three, four games? Um, Maybe. I wouldn't, because Mitchell also can stay healthy. I like Mason a ton, but I do think if there's a player that can step in, step up as a rookie, I think you can find a like Edwards, SEC guy, big name school, getting overlooked. He has the build. He's got the speed. He has the vision. Like I can see Kyle Shanahan saying, we're not going to pay a third, fourth, fifth round pick for this guy. But if he's there in the sixth round, late fifth round, why not? Like, he can supplant and be your fourth, third, and in two or three years, be your second running back on your team. Now, that's if he reaches the potential I, I, I have for him. But, like, you're at a point, if you're the Niners, where you've gotten your right tackle, your defensive tackle, you've gotten two edge rushers, you've gotten your cornerback, you've got the guys that you think can impact this year. 
you can take a risk on a running back in the fifth, sixth round, which isn't even a risk at all. Like, that is what you're supposed to do at that point. Uh, we are back on the board. Pick 251. This is the final pick for the Niners in this mock draft. Last time we talked, we drafted Devin Leary from Kentucky. Okay. When that pick went through, I wasn't sold on it. It was an okay. We made a quarterback. Blah, 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 whatever. Like, this team doesn't need a quarterback. Even last year, with Brock pretty healthy in training camp and OTAs, they were not, like, there really wasn't, like, <laughs> they were not getting four quarterback reps. They just weren't. Um... It would be really hard to, in my head, justify taking a quarterback, which I know last week I said, if you like the guy, get him in the building, have the exact same mantra you have when you picked Brock Purdy. If you like him, take him. Um, not against that. That makes sense to me. Um, I would be sold on that. Like, like, okay, cool. Like, yes, you're right. Um, or you can pick a position of value, right? Like, you can go best player available and say, great, cool, that guy's in the room, and then they can not play for four or five years. Um, or you can pick a position that, take linebacker, that you need a linebacker. You have Campbell, you have Winters, you have DFF, you have Warner, um, you have Graham, then you have a returning Dre Greenlaw whenever he's healthy again. Do you want to add to that room? I think there's a player from Wyoming that probably won't get drafted. His name is Easton Gibbs. He's six foot, 232 pounds, runs a four seven. So he isn't crazy athletic, but, um, he's athletic enough to stick with running backs out of the backfield. He's physical enough to knock receivers off of their crossing routes. He's a pretty go gay blitzer. He, he's rangy in zone coverage. He can cover tight ends. Um, and last year in coverage, he had four pass breakups, one pick, and a 74 rating when targeted by quarterbacks. So, again, not perfect, but seventh round pick ain't the worst thing in the world. Um, one knock on him that I think will just blow my mind if I ever see him play in person. He, like, doesn't hustle on certain plays, and it blows my mind. Um, but the coverage skills are there that make me say, okay, like San Francisco has said over and over again, if you can cover, we will consider you. We can work on run defense. We can work on tackling and, and your technique. Whereas if you don't hustle, but you can cover, like they can get bought into what you want to do. But the hustling thing is just a like a big red flag for me. Um, but the, all that said, I, I, I do like what he brings to the table. You can also get into a conversation about Quantez Stiggers from the CFL. San Francisco was at his personal pro day, I believe. Um, they were, uh, I don't want to say enamored with him, but they liked him enough to go visit and, and have a discussion with him and talk to him. Um, CFL guy, he's not going to get looked at as much as a guy from, you know, a D3 school. No one takes the CFL seriously in America usually. There's one or two guys that come over each year, mostly kickers. Uh, but Quantez Stiggers could be someone you point to and say, okay, like that. I like what that guy brings to the table. Um, I want to go back to tackle for a second because there is a couple guys that I think, if they're on the board, I do like a lot. Um, I don't see them anywhere, unfortunately. Um, but I do want to talk about a player... Like, um, let's see if I can find them on my, on my big board I have on my phone. <laughs> um, it's Javon Foster from Missouri. Uh, not a fan of his. Has good hands. Can win early. Um, really good at striking the outside shoulder, but isn't strong enough to play. I think tackle in the NFL sets up way too deep. You can tell he's playing way too safe. Um, there's a player like Michael Jurgens, who I think would get a lot of love from San Francisco. He's 6'4", 
311 pounds, 32 and 3 eighths inch arms, can play tackle, guard, and center, fifth year player, um, nearly 2,500 snaps in college. Um, he allowed a 0.8 pressure rate <laughs> and had a 0.2% sack rate in college at Wake Forest. Um, I think this is like a third round pick, fourth round pick kind of guy. Um, if he is there, he could replace Burford day one and you can cut Burford and say whatever. Like Michael Jurgens is that good. Good run blocker. Very coordinated. Um, great at getting to that second level and opening up lanes for McCaffrey, a Mitchell, maybe a Dejan Edwards from Georgia. Um, really good off his blocks, uh, off the snap, extremely fast, has the agility, natural power to move defenders over. Um, and also like he, he understands when to block, when to get off, uh, the line of scrimmage and, and just really knows and understands the art of blocking. Now I'm no, you know, offensive line guru, all that to say, but I do think for a player like if he's there, Michael Jurgens, you can look at him and say, okay, like I, like he can be a guard come day one, maybe sit behind, uh, Feliciano and Banks for a year, but I think Banks is a free agent after this year. Now, there's a good chance that Michael Jurgens, if he's there and they like him a lot, he could be left guard. He can be your right guard come, you know, year two in 2025. Like, he's that impressive to me. Um, I do want to talk about one player, though, on defense. And I think he's going to be the pick. Um, I don't think he will last this long. But I just dove into him today before I did this. And it's Jaden Cremuddy from Mississippi State defensive tackle. You have Braden Fisk, that's fine. We like Braden Fisk a lot. Second round pick, back-to-back -back weeks in a row. But Jaden Cremuddy, who will be the pick here um, from Mississippi State, um, 6'4", 301 pounds. He's quick off the line he has 33 inch arms 10 and a half inch hands those are massive hands 10 and a half inch hands are you serious um high motor body built for the nfl he's relatively raw um you'd like him to have a better plan when it comes to attacking offensive linemen um i do wish he was a little bit more violent when it came to attacking the offensive lineman, um, you just like when you're 6'4, 301, and if, if he can be 310, even better. Like, I want you to want to hurt somebody. Not really, but impose your will on them. I want that for uh, Jaden Cremuddy. And I think on a defensive line that has Hargrave, that now has in our mock, mock draft back to back weeks, Braden Fisk, Malik Collins, Jordan Elliott. Um, has Kalia Davis and Kevin Gibbons. He wouldn't need to be involved in any kind of rotation come day one, but Kalia Davis is never healthy. Guys get hurt. When you're 6'4", 301, like, your body is naturally, like, I am the NFL <laughs> archetype of a body for a defensive tackle. Um, I think with Chris Kosarek, I don't think he falls this far, but he's there, so let's take him. Um... I I think he can be really special. And by special, I don't mean, you know, top five guy, top 20 guy. I just mean, like, take DJ Jones. I'm not saying he's Jones, but DJ Jones is a very special defensive tackle. Um, like, he, he has a role. He fits it well. Um, but I do think Cremuddy, who is a massive human, like... I want to see him against a smaller guard. I want to see him against a player, like let's say the Rams draft the guard or whatever they do, or or, or the Cardinals or um, or uh, Seattle. Like if Seattle goes and picks a player like um, Dominic Puny, Bo Miller, like I want to see him go nuts. Like he's as big as Jordan Morgan is. He's one inch smaller and 10 pounds lighter. He is Jordan Morgan's size. And Jordan Morgan isn't a baby. Like, he's a big man who played about four or five years in college. 
Like, Jordan Morgan played almost 2,500 snaps at Arizona. Kamadi is a large human. But, like, I want to see him against, you know, a Jackson Powers Johnson who is 6'3", 330 pounds. Like, I want to see these two titans of menace go up against each other. Um, he doesn't have natural leverage because he is so big, but I do think for Kermuddy, he just seems like he doesn't have a plan. And you get him Chris Kosarek. You get him Chris Kosarek in the seventh round. Like, we're not talking first round. We're not talking third. Like, we're talking seventh round. You get Chris Kosarek, Braden Fisk, Javon Solomon, and Jaden Kermuddy from Mississippi State. Like, that's a lot to work with and a lot of guys who I do think could not just start and play roles now like Fisk could, but in a year or two, Solomon, Kermuddy, they could be those depth guys you plug in and, and say, go get the quarterback. Guys you look at and say, boom, like, you are... Like, that was a seventh-round pick. That was a you know, fifth-round pick. Um, again, I like our first mock draft a lot better, but this one was, what would it cost to go get the one of the top tackles. Like, we got Jordan Morgan last week. This mock draft was going to be, what would it cost to go get a Marius Mims? And I know Eldon Paul, M, or Eldon M. Paul Sr. says, I don't know. I think we should go best player available unless they fall in love with the player and trade up. Don't reach for a player at 31. You're right. Hence why... We fell in love with the player and traded up, and we got rid of a handful of picks. Um, the Marius Mims trade was pick 31 this year, pick 94 this year, pick 211 this year, then a second and third round pick next year. We traded our second or our, our third round pick this year, and uh, our first round pick this year, and I think a seventh round pick this year. For Marius Mims, plus two picks next year. We fell in love with the player, and that's what it's going to cost. Like, I got a ton of comments on the last mock draft. As soon as you said Jordan Morgan, I turned the podcast off. And I was like, okay, one, why would you do that? But but two, thanks for the listen for five minutes. <laughs> but I think Niner fans can sell themselves on Jordan Morgan. I can sell myself on Jordan Morgan. But that was mock draft 1.0. That was let's stay put, pick players we like. This one was let's move up, get the blue chipper right tackle in two, three years time could be a left tackle to replace Trent Williams. What is it going to cost you? Pick 31, a third round pick this year, a seventh round pick this year. It's going to cost you a second and third next year too. Like if it takes that to get the next Trent, which Mims, I'm not saying he is, but if it takes that to get you the blue chip prospect that you're not going to find at 31, most likely, like, for as good as Jordan Morgan is, could be for as experienced as he is, Amarius Mims has this amazing build, phenomenal body, 6'7", with 340 pounds, whatever he is, like, he's a massive human being, that you look at him against other edge rushers, like, Year one, he'll get beat by a Miles Garrett. Guarantee you, you, year two, he wouldn't be. Like, you can scoff and say that's too much to go up for Marius Mims, but what if that right tackle position gets solidified? I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying you solidify right tackle, and in two years' time, you don't have to worry about who's playing left tackle for Trent. It's Marius Mims. Don't worry about it. I do think there's a lot of value. Like, I seen other mock drafts in the community. You know, Brad Graham, I think he traded up for Troy Fontenot from um, Washington, I believe. I think that's what he did. Um, like, people were like, do it. Yeah, we love it. Okay. that in, in, in this case, in this mock draft, that was pick 13. I love Troy. Troy's great. I don't think San Francisco in this mock draft could go from 31 to to 13 we went 31 to 17 and Amarius Mims to some can be a better tackle like Troy Fontenot is really good really strong if they can get him fine fine perfect but I think it's much more feasible 
that Amarius Mims is there. Like, they're not going to get Talise Fuaga. They're not going to get uh, Fashano from Penn State or Joe Alt. Like, their sweet spot is the Jordan Morgans, the Kingsley Suomateas, the Graham Bartons, Tyler Guidens. Like, those those tackles make more sense. And some of those guys, Suomatea, could be a guard. Like, I think if you told me we walked away with the Marius Mims as the right tackle, kept our second round pick this year, and then knowing it cost you a first this year, pick swap, a third, a second and third next year, and you're going to have like two third round compensatory picks anyways, it really cost you a pick swap, a third and a third and a seventh. Sign me up. Like that is clean sweep, give it to me. Um, Eldon M. Paul Sr., we did not take Braden Fisk in the first round. Second round pick, pick 63. So don't worry. Don't fret. We're not going Braden Fisk in the first round, I promise. I'm not doing it at all. He is a second round pick. I promise you that. <laughs> um, but look, that, that to me, if I liked last week's strat a lot. Was really impressed by it. But I really also like this week's strat. I think the players that we liked, we can justify in taking. I think getting a Marius Mims is the biggest bang for your buck at at, at pick 17, knowing Fuag is gone, knowing that Fontenot is gone. He's the next big name off the board. You're not getting Alt. You're not getting um. Uh, you, you're not getting Alt or or Fontano or, or or Fuaga. You're not getting any of those players unless you're going inside the top 15. We couldn't afford that. It was too rich. They said no. Got a Marius Mims. Got a right tackle again. Arguably the third best right tackle in this class. I can argue that for sure. Um, got our defense tackle again. Solidified outside cornerback. Like, I think for as good as last week's mock draft was in staying put, at the price it costs to get Mims in this mock draft, it's a win. And I think every Niner fan, there'll be questions, sure. Can they still play? Can they pull it off? I think they should be extremely happy if this is the takeaway from mock draft round number two. And we have 3.0 and we got 4.0 still to come, but I think so far in two mock drafts, we have cooked the competition. Like, the Seattle Seahawks took J.C. Latham in this mock draft. What are we doing? J.C. Latham, I think to me is so overhyped, overrated. I think he's a guard, not a tackle. And they took him ahead of us at 16. We got Mims, a better, better prospect, younger, at 17. Like, if you told me that Latham went to Seattle, and we got Mims one pick apart, I would laugh and say, yeah, Seattle gets to Seattle themselves all over again. Like, it makes a, like... Putting this out tomorrow on Instagram and Twitter will be fun because everyone has an opinion of, why'd you pick that guy? You didn't like that guy. Okay, like, relax. The hyenas shouldn't be out just yet, but people like that first mock draft a lot. Um, I wanted to get a little more ballsy, risky, if, if, if you would, trading up, what would it cost? Um, I won't lie to you. I sat back like an hour prior to doing it live and said, what would it cost to get a Mary Smims? Um, and went through about four or five mock drafts to go, what would it cost? It's a lot. Like, you're talking pick swap, second, third, and third. Like, it's going to be a lot. Um, but I think even if you did that, you win. Like, if Mims is who he looks like he's going to be, you have won the draft in the first round. And you've not, you've not risked and put your future at jeopardy by trading a second and third round pick when you're probably going to retain that third round pick next year for a comp pick anyways. I think it's really smart. I think Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch, the last time they had pick 31, traded up for Brandon Ayuk. Will it happen? Maybe not. But if they like a guy and he's there, I would not be surprised if they get aggressive. If you like a player, go get him. Sometimes he blows up in your face. Joe Williams, Trey Lance, and you're like, yikes. Sometimes you love the guy and it works. Brandon Ayuk, right? Um, so we'll see. 
This has been Mock Draft 2.0. 17, Amarius Mims. 63, Braden Fisk. Pick 124, Kyrie Jackson. Pick 132, Javon Baker. Pick 135, Javon Solomon. Pick 176, Xavier Thomas. 215, Dejan Edwards. And pick 251, Jaden Cremuddy. That is eight picks, I believe. I can't count. Eight picks. <laughs> eight picks. I think a really stellar... I'd give myself a B plus. If you didn't like the trade, that's fine. Tell me what you think of this mock draft down below in the comments on YouTube, on Facebook, on X and Twitter. You can follow us on both those platforms. 49ers.access is the Instagram. 49ers underscore access is the X or Twitter. Tell me what you think of my mock draft 2.0 using the Pro Football Network mock draft simulator i hope you liked it i had a great time doing it stay tuned next monday mock draft 3.0 but until then use our promo code 49ers access 49 ers acc -E -S -S at seatgeek.com save 20 dollars off your first purchase go to baseball game i'm gonna go to nba playoff game Use that promo code and save yourself $20 off. But stay tuned. Mock Draft 3.0 next Monday. In the meantime, though, I want you, as always, to like, share, subscribe, and stay faithful.